Hi, this is Alex from PHP Academy. In this tutorial, we're going to be creating a unique visitor counter based on the user's IP address. Now, there is another tutorial available on the PHP Academy channel that involves a non-unique visitor counter in which we just increment a value inside a text file, such as this one here, counter.txt. However, what I've actually done is in the same directory created a new file called ip.txt which I have open here which is also blank um, and what this is going to do is it's going to store a, a list on a line by line basis of user IPs and these user IPs correspond to the user IPs that uh, of the visitors that have visited. Now the way we're going to be doing this, um, is, there's a couple of things to point out before we start. The server variable which we're going to be using, uh, which is the remote address server variable, isn't entirely reliable for IP addresses. For example, you'll see now that although I'm connected to the internet on my laptop, the IP address will still be 127.0.0.1, so it won't reflect my global IP address. This is the same for people that are working through, uh, for example, a hub or a router. You may have a uh, an IP address, something like 192.168.1.1, as opposed to their um, global IP. So bear that in mind. There are other methods you can use to grab a more reliable IP address, but that can uh, sort of be returned with a simple Google search. Um, but for the simplicity of this tutorial, I'm going to be doing this. The other thing to point out is that if you are using this to count uh, visitors on your website, uh, we're using the file get contents and the file put contents uh, um, function as well as the file function. Now if you were to use this on every page in your website, the CPU load could increase dramatically um, as opposed to if you were doing it through a database for example where you're accessing a MySQL server. The other thing to point out is the file size of ip.txt. If you're expecting um, a lot of visitors and you're building this file up, you may find that you'll get a large file size, therefore you are wasting um, space on your server, um, as opposed to a database method which would um, be more reliable. However, um, if you are um, interested in learning uh, some of the functions that we're going to be using in this, it's a great tutorial just to get to grips with file handling and checking if a file exists in a file um, and performing an action based on that, that. So this is essentially coming off of the simple visitor counter which uh, dealt with non-unique hits. Um, so we're going to be doing exactly the same thing but we're going to make a few minor changes. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to define a variable called file name and that's going to be equal to counter.txt. This is where we're going to store um, our hits. So it's just going to be a single integer um, from one to the amount of hits you have gained. We also need an IP file name and that is going to be, you probably guessed, ip.txt which is a file I currently have open here. The reason I've got these open in my browser is so I can monitor the changes throughout creating this. Okay, so we're going to create a function, and this is going to be called ink count. So we're creating the uh, outline of our function. We've got function keyword here. Ink count is the name of the function which we're going to call just down here when we finished uh, the function contents. And then we have a block here with curly braces. Now we need to make file name and IP file name global in order to use them inside of our function. So we simply use the global keyword and we say file name and then comma IP file name. This makes these two here global to this function so we can use them inside of here. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do, um, oh, actually I've forgotten the IP address. We need to define the user's IP address and store it in this IP variable. And to get an IP address, it's dollar underscore server. So we're accessing server, uh, the global server variable set. And inside of here, it's remote underscore ADDR, which stands for address. So we've got the IP. We can use this later on. Um, what we need to do now is we need to uh, establish um, counting our hits. Uh, this is outlined in the um, simple visitor counter tutorial, 
However, I'm going to go ahead and write it out again. So we're going to be creating a variable called current value. And this is going to be written to the um, file counter.txt based on a condition that the file exists. Obviously, if it exists, we are going to just write the current um, value add one. Otherwise, we're going to set the count this current value to zero and later on add one to it when we're adding. The same as we'd do if we already had a value that existed. So the current value, we create um, some parentheses here, a question mark, um, a colon, and uh, then a line terminator. And we're going to put input some data between these. And essentially, this is the condition. After the question mark is the result if this condition is true. And this is the uh, condition if the um, this is the result if the condition is false. So you'll see what I mean when we pull it together. So the condition is if file exists, and then in brackets, so we're using the file exists function, file name. This just ensures that counter.txt is uh, does exist. You'll have to create ip.txt manually because I'm not going to include a check uh, in this particular script to check if this ip.txt file exists. So you'll have to go and create that manu manually yourself. You could even go ahead and create the counter.txt um, file yourself as well. So if it does exist, we want to say file get contents. And we're getting the contents of file name. Otherwise, we want to set this value to zero. So essentially what we're doing is we're checking if the file exists. If it does exist, we are um, the current value is equal to the value that's currently in counter.txt, which could be 0, 1, or it could be 1,000. It could be any value whatsoever. Um, otherwise, we're setting the current value here to 0, so quite straightforward. Um, now, under here, what we need to, oh, sorry, no, down here, what we need to do is we need to actually write this to um, our counter.txt file. So we're going to say file put contents. So the opposite of file get contents, we're actually putting data into our counter.txt file. So we can specify a file name there. And then the value is plus plus, so we're incrementing current value. So I'm not going to go into this too much because it is outlined in the other tutorial. However, let's go ahead and call the function and then test this out. OK, so I've got my counter.txt file open. I'm going to come over to my browser and refresh once, twice, and three times. Come back to my text editor, and you can see that my counter.txt file has been changed. I'm going to reload that, click on there, and you can see the values three. So the first thing we've done is established that we have a non-unique kit counter. Now what we need to do is include some other checks to ensure that the IP hasn't already been logged. And we're not even logging the IP address yet, we're just incrementing counter.txt.